Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU, and today I wanted to create this video to discuss some issues and concerns you guys are having with the iOS 9.3.3 jailbreak, and we're also going to talk about whether Pangu is going to update their jailbreak to A, include support for older devices, and B, to make it untethered, meaning you won't have to actually open up the jailbreak app and reapply it or patch the kernel to actually use Cydia or anything that you've obtained via Cydia. All right, and before we get into this, if you guys have absolutely any questions that I didn't cover in today's video or you have further comments, complications, just be sure to post them on jailbreakandhacks.com forward slash forums. You can sign up. It's so easy. It only takes a matter of seconds. Post there and you'll get your questions answered by either myself or other knowledgeable individuals. First though, let's talk about the on-device jailbreak method. So for those of you who either don't have a computer or you don't want to use a computer for whatever reason that may be, you can still of course jailbreak via Safari. Just launch up Safari, it has to be Safari. You cannot use another browser and you cannot navigate to it in Twitter if you guys see me tweet out this link. So you'll need to go to jailbreakme9.com, but if you happen to tap on download now without either reading through the steps on the website or watching my in-depth tutorial that I created, followed by tapping on install, it will not work for you. It's as simple as that. That's because during the install process, when the application actually moves from loading to installing on your device, you have to bring up control center and toggle on airplane mode because it does make use of an expired developer enterprise certificate. That's the only way to bypass it and get this app installed on your device. Now in my tutorial, I highlight a great way to actually know when to enter airplane mode because believe it or not, it is incredibly time sensitive. If you're off by just a second, it will not work and you'll have to retry it. So watch my tutorial, it will be linked on your displays now in the cards as well as down below in the description. Definitely check it out if you're going to use jailbreakme9.com, which is really the only on-device jailbreak site that can guarantee a 100% uptime and also super fast downloads. Speaking of downloads, once you do the on-device jailbreak, you will receive the PP Combination Pangu app in Chinese, and you cannot get the English version on your device without having to utilize a computer. Now, the reason for that is because Pangu is just distributing that app, the English version, without developer enterprise certificates, whereas as the PP Combination Pangu app is delivered with certificates. And what that also means is that once it is installed on your device, it will continually check in the background for new versions of their developer enterprise certificates. It will connect to their server and it will download updated ones from different companies. So if you don't want your device to constantly connect to remote servers, some of them are in China, whereas others are in different regions of the world, then you do not want the Chinese version. Instead, you want the English version, which brings me to my next point. Yes, you can move from one of these jail breaks to the other without having to restore and without losing anything. I need you guys to hear me here. The only thing that this application, whether it's the Pangu one in English or the PP Pangu one in Chinese actually contains is the jailbreak payload. And of course the ability to patch the kernel following a reboot. So that way you can utilize anything from Cydia. Basically all it contains is the jailbreak itself, nothing else and everything is stored on your device. So in fact, you could fully delete either application or both if you happen to have them both on your device and still be fine, still be able to use Cydia and go for however long you want without having to reinstall either app until you reboot. That's key. If you do reboot your device because this is not a fully untethered jailbreak and you do have to repatch the kernel following a reboot, then you'll need to either re-download one of the apps or if you already have one installed, of course, go through the steps to repatch the kernel. It's as easy as that. So switching is really just as simple as tapping and holding holding on either of the applications, followed by tapping on the X to delete it. And then that's it. You can just install the other one and utilize that app moving forward. All right, now for those of you who reboot, try to utilize the jailbreak application and your device just reboots and you still can't use Cydia or anything you've obtained through your jailbreak, it's undoubtedly because you're following the procedure incorrectly. So what you need to do is launch up whichever jailbreak app you have and then wait inside of the app without doing anything for 20 seconds. Now you don't wanna to wait too long and you don't want to wait too little either. So you want to try to target 20 seconds pretty much exactly. After that point, you either need to tap inside of the circle for the Chinese version or tap on start for the English version doesn't matter which one you have, they're both the same. After you tap in the app, you need to wait five seconds and then lock your device. And then once you do that, you'll be good to go. It works 100% of the time for every device. 
Now, the reason why anyone would really want to use the Chinese version, aside from the fact that it is deliverable on device via Safari, the English one never will be, is because it actually utilizes that developer enterprise certificate method and it constantly checks for new ones. By the way, there's no such thing as a guaranteed one-year certificate. For a complete explanation of the differences between the Chinese and English versions, definitely check below. But it will be on your device for longer than seven days. And if you do use the English version, unless you have an official Apple developer account, you can only sign the app with your Apple ID for seven days, but that way at least it will not continually check in the background for new certificates and either take up battery life or again connect to those remote servers that you don't want your device connecting to. And as I mentioned before, because all this app actually does is A, jailbreak and B, repatch the kernel, you don't need it. So if you move beyond those seven days, just so long as your device doesn't reboot, you don't have to use the application. So that way you can still use Cydia even if you go with the English Pangu version. Now that brings us into our next point quite nicely. Will we ever be able to transition beyond these two applications and be able to reboot and fully use Cydia and anything we download from Cydia without, of course, having those apps? Unfortunately, the answer to that question is no. On iOS 9.3.3, Pangu has absolutely no plans of issuing a full untethered jailbreak. So they did register for an official Reddit account recently and they have answered a couple of questions. They're definitely not active on there, but they wanna give their official word on a few things and this is one of those topics. Now I've mentioned it previously in some of my past videos. I've told you guys there is not going to be an untethered version. I've said it on Twitter a countless number of times, but here we go, we have word from Pangu once again Again, there are going to be no untethered jailbreak plans. Here you have it straight from the horse's mouth. Weird expression, but there we go. No untethered jailbreak for 9.3.3. And that brings us into the next bit of unfortunate news. If you do own a 32-bit device because this jailbreak is exclusive to 64-bit, they're not going to release an update for those older devices. Again, they say, quote, sorry, there is no plan for 32-bit now. So for this jailbreak, at least, we're not going to get support for those older devices, which does include the iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, iPhone 5C, iPad mini 1, and iPad 2, 3, and 4, as well as the fifth gen iPod Touch. If you have one of those devices, sorry guys, you're not going to be able to jailbreak this time around. And what's even more unfortunate is the fact that some of those devices are actually going to be cut out in iOS 10. In fact, the only ones that are going to make it through to iOS 10 are the iPhone 5, 5C, and iPad 4. Unfortunately, the 4S, iPad mini 1, iPad 2, and 3, as well as the 5th gen iPod Touch will not get iOS 10.0. So it seems a little weird that Pangu would not dedicate extra time to discovering new exploits and vulnerabilities that would include support for those devices, seeing as iOS 9.3.x is probably going to be the last update. Again, we do not have a jailbreak for those devices is the last one was iOS 9.0.2. So that's really sad. I hope that someone, if it's not Pangu, comes out with a solution for you guys because I can definitely feel your pain, especially since you're not getting iOS 10. So that really sucks. Even though it does make sense from a development standpoint, and the same thing can be said for an untethered jailbreak, they're not going to spend time on that. They've already released what they're going to release. They're not going to do anything significant, just minor updates here and there for stability could be issued in the future, but beyond that, nothing else will change with this jailbreak. What we have currently is what we get. We're not going to see anything major again for iOS 9.3.x, and the reason for that is so that Pangu can dedicate their attention and solely focus on iOS 10. That's right around the corner. It's going to be released in September, probably the beginning of September it looks like, because of course new iOS versions always drop before the next gen iPhones released, and the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus may actually hit shelves in the the beginning of September, the first two weeks. So that's why they're not going to do anything else with this jailbreak. They're focused on the future. Again, though, I really do hope that someone, if not Pangu, comes out with a solution for those 32-bit devices that are getting phased out in iOS 10. And speaking of, even the iPhone 5 and 5C, which will make it to iOS 10, probably won't get a jailbreak next time around either. Reason being is that unless they actually find a vulnerability that is exploitable on both 32-bit as well as 64-bit CPU architecture, then it probably won't happen. Again, they're not going to spend the time researching just for two devices, unless of course it is exploitable across all CPU architectures, being 32 and 64. 
And finally, I just wanted to address the ludicrous claims going on throughout the jailbreak community right now that Pangu and or 25PP, of course, their partners in releasing this jailbreak, are actually hacking individual devices, specifically users' PayPal accounts, once jailbroken. Guys, that is so far-fetched. That's nowhere near the truth. Pangu issued an official statement on Twitter a few days ago saying, quote, neither we nor 25PP would be so stupid to make money by hacking users' PayPal account via jailbreak tool. We hope to find out the truth ASAP. They also posted a couple more things on Reddit, but basically they were the exact same sentiment. I mean, guys, bust out the tinfoil hats right now because believe it or not, they're not going to waste their time hacking individual devices just to earn a few quick bucks, all while losing their credibility in the world of jailbreaking. Guys, that's their bread and butter. They make jailbreak tools in collaboration with 25PP, who in turn enables Chinese users to essentially pirate applications. And of course, there is monetary incentive behind that for both of these guys, Pangu as well as 25PP. So they're not going to do something that stupid as they themselves said. So that wraps up everything I wanted to talk about in today's video, really, guys. Just some quick updates here and there, letting you know what's what in the realm of jailbreaking and what we can expect. Again, hopefully an iOS 10 jailbreak shortly following its release. Of course, Pangu already demonstrated that they could jailbreak iOS 10 beta 1 at MOSEC 2016, and I definitely have confidence that they'll be able to jailbreak the GM Seed or Gold Master, again, being the public release. Whether or not they actually jailbreak iOS 10.0 or wait for a future version, though, is of course still to be determined. I will keep you guys updated along the way, though, when we start to know more and things unfold, so definitely click that subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to, and then just like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. It's as easy as that. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCrack Your Device community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.